This khutbah or this uh, message, inshallah, will be of two parts. Second part will be about uh, Dhul Hijjah and regarding the days coming up for Dhul Hijjah. Before that, inshallah, we'll focus on regarding um, meaning when a person loses a loved one, um, how does a person kind of cope uh, with these things? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that every single person in this dunya will pass away. Every single person in this, you know, whether it's uh, young, whether it's old, whether it's um, male, whether it's female, a child or an elderly person, every single person passes away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at a person's height, doesn't look at a person's weight, doesn't look at a person's age. So when somebody passes away and he's young, only a teenager when he passes away, then it hits uh, quite hard. And it's quite uh, tough to try and see someone who passes away and he's quite young. 17, 18 year, years old was uh, the person that passed away a few days ago. So for last Jummah, he was here for last Jummah and this Jummah, he's not here. So this is how life is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when talking about regarding these things, how do you comfort? How do you give comfort to certain those people that have lost a loved one? How do you give comfort and how do you console them? And we look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does first of all. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to believe in a qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to believe, you know, wants us to believe and have iman in a certain thing which is to do with qiyamah. And the Qiyamah is lots of benefits in just believing in uh, a Qiyamah in an afterlife, in a life after death. So when somebody passes away and then uh, they realize there's an afterlife, then it comforts the family, saying, you know what, he's in a better place. So imagine how much uh, effort, how much love you can give to a family member, how much you can care, take care of them. And then you look at uh, Allah's level and the angel's level and how much they can take care of them. And there's no comparison. There's no comparison. Just like how you look at the world in this, uh, in a manner where you think that the world is that's it, there's nothing else. And then you look at the, in the life hereafter and, and look at the paradise, look at Jannah, it's completely different. There's not even a comparison between the two. So in the same way when a person passes away, he's got a fortunate uh, you know, passing. Now we know that Allah subhanahu is looking after that person. So imagine I'm looking after somebody and then Allah looking after that person. It's completely different. There's no comparison uh, between the two. So this gives comfort towards a loved one. So just like how Qiyamah and the life after death, we say that it gives comfort. And we even know through psychology, through uh, when you're looking at the, you know, um, uh, that kind of um, statistics. So those statistics regarding those people that are in depression, thinking about suicide, uh, thinking about, you know, uh, they have a lot high level of anxiety, OCD and so forth, paranoia. Uh, for those people that have this, number one, and now you have a section of those people that believe in a hereafter. They believe in a life after death. They can cope with, they have coping mechanisms. Uh, those people that uh, have a faith in the life hereafter, have faith in akhirah, they can very easily cope. They can cope much better when a person believes in an akhirah, believes there's going to be a qiyamah, believes there's going to be something good happening to them afterwards. And that gives them a sense of now hope 
and easier to cope with regarding depression. Regarding, I'm not saying that a person who's a Muslim cannot be depressed. It's just that it's easier to cope when a person has faith. And that is also known according to Western sciences as well. So we don't need Western sciences, but for us just to try and add weight to our kind of, and some people have this liberal mindset. Now when a person puts this forward, then hopefully that uh, faith comes out more inside of a person as well. So Qiyamah is there. So when a person looks, looks about regarding Qiyamah, uh, some of the things that is mentioned regarding Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu says, Afa hasibtum annama khalaqnakum abata. Do you think I just made this world for, for play, for fun, in vain? It's for a reason, meaning if I, if I have a Qiyamah and I believe in a Qiyamah, that my, my, my meaning, sorry, my life has meaning. My life now has meaning. You're going along with 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years of your life and you've got no meaning. Then what, what's the point of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, there must be a reason behind this. So having uh, meaning in your life really does motivate you to do something good, to make you achieve something, gives you self-discipline, it gives you a, a chance to try and uh, look after what uh, a person has, you know, uh, has been granted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a certain reason. And this is now to try and uh, realize, and you have to try and realize what your reason is. So I've been in this dunya for so many years, and the people are dying around me, whether younger than me, they're older than me. Well, what's happening to me? What am I supposed to do about this? No, uh, isn't something supposed to hit my heart? Isn't so, something supposed to make me, you know, change something, change happen into my heart, into my life? What's it, this is supposed to happen to me. This is, you know, these are signs for us. These are reminders for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, believing in a qiyamah gives us accountability. I'm now accountable of what I do in this dunya. Because if I do something good in this dunya, I know that I have full hope and reward that. And that something's going to happen to me in the akhirah, which is something of good. And a person won't move on the day of judgment until he answers those questions about his wealth about his health, about his time, about where he got his money, where he spent it from, about his life. Allah will ask him these questions. And when Allah asks these questions towards this person, then a person has to answer. And if a person spends his time wisely, does what he has to do in this dunya, goes about his dunya in a way where Allah is happy with him, and pleased with him, then he can easily answer the questions on the day of, uh, of judgment. If this teaches us morality, teaches us a lot of ethics. If a person knows about Qiyamah and he believes in a Qiyamah, and then generally you find that in society, when a faith, when a society believes and has faith in uh, and hereafter, you'll see less sin happening. You find less sin happening in that society. You find more generosity happening in that society. Why? Right? Because they believe in something that's going to give them more in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding al haq wa mutakathu. How much of us are now in this dunya and we're winding our days down? We're bumbling along like nothing's going to happen to us. How many of us are in, involved in regarding la'ib, lahu, you know, those play, those vain kind of talks, futile kind of actions. We're not doing much which is going to be helping our akhirah. Hatta zurtum al maqabir until the time comes when we go and to, towards the maqabir, the qabrs, the, where, where the qabr stand, where the, the place of uh, burial is. That's when a person realizes. Oh, until then, now it's too late. When a person has already gone into the qabr, now it's too late to try and realize that I was involved in all of these things. For us, we're still here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us longer lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us extra time. Opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Again and again and again. So how long are we going to be involved in al-haqqum al takathur How long are we going to be involved in those vain things that we're going to go out, we're going to talk, we're going to go here, we're going to go there, and there's no meaning in life. There's no benefit in what we are doing. Must something must stri strike us in our hearts. Must something must hit us. And if a person doesn't get this, whether it's through death, because we say that visiting the grave and visiting and talking about death, it kills the desires. It kills everyone's desires. Just to stare inside of a, uh, a qabr, a grave, it kills it. No one thinks about doing something sinful when a person is looking inside of the grave. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hatta zurtum until you time the time reaches when a person goes towards the places of qabr and then he realizes this is my life, this is what I'm gonna be afterwards, this is where everyone's gonna carry me on, on, on my you know, on the on the shoulders of others and then place me down. This is how it's gonna be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes off uh, the surah by mentioning that every single ni'mah, every single favor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, Allah will definitely, 100%, 100% 
will ask you regarding what you've done with these actions, what you've done with these ni'mas, what you've done with these favors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you, I gave you your life, I gave you good health, I gave you a good mind, I gave you a good tongue, I gave you a good ear, I gave you good eyes. What did you use it for? What are we using this for? Are we using it for good things? Are we using it for something which is of the pleasure of Allah? For the obedience of Allah? Or is it something which is disobedient? My eyes are going here and there. Is this obedient? Is this, I'm using my ni'mah wisely. My ears, I'm putting things in my ears which I'm not supposed to. I'm talking about certain things which I'm not supposed to. And every single thing happens or everything faces and it goes towards the heart. And the heart gets corrupted and the whole body gets corrupted. So a person must realize and wake up. Must realize and wake up. A person doesn't know which salah will be his last salah. A person doesn't know that. Nobody knows and when they pass away, no one knows until they pass away. Until they go and visit the Qabr. Until they go and get placed inside of the Qabr. So this is very important for us to try and wake up. Try and realize that this dunya, you shouldn't be bumbling around. Bumbling along that nothing's going to happen to you. I've got my whole life ahead of me. It's now. It's my last salah. It's my last day. How do I deal with it? How do I go about, if, I, if you have a good habit of doing general good things and then the person passes away, then generally he's going to be passing away doing something good. And this is how a life should be. That's how your habits should be. This is how a person, this is what, when a person wants to go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in what state does he want to go in? When Allah is pleased with him, that's it. If Allah is pleased with you and you go to meet him and he's pleased with you, khalas, finished. If forever, for everlasting, you need paradise, luxury, happiness, joy, and this is what we want. The last thing that we do is a good salah. The last thing that we, good, we do is something of a good where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. The action that the ibadah or the worship that, he's, that, he, that He has made us do, that He is now pleased with. He's accepted sincere and sincerity inside of my heart. So, this is what a person must try and Use these opportunities wisely and Qiyamah gives us opti optimism in difficult times. It gives us, uh, it would, uh, it's difficult today, it will be easy tomorrow. And difficult today, it will be easy to tomorrow. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. It's difficult now. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry, later on, it will be easy for you. But just there's a bit of sabr, there's a bit of patience you have to go through. Qiyamah softens the pain. Why? Because you know there's another, it's not now, you lost forever and you won't see them again. We say, no, we see them in the, in the hereafter. We'll see those people in the hereafter and hopefully we'll see them in Jannah and we'll be them, with them in Jannah as well. So to console and how to cope with loss and uh, uh, without faith is very hard. But with faith, Alhamdulillah, it makes it easy for us to try and cope with the certain things. This is why it's so important to realize that there's many other benefits of Qiyamah. Uh, but these opportunities for us is very important to try and grab to try and take, to try and reflect, and try and say that, you know what, I need to try and sort out my life, to fix my life, and try and be better, a better person, so then I can be of benefit for those people that have passed away, and for those, for myself and my, and my family members as well. And these opportunities always come around from time to time. We have Ramadan, and we have the time of Hajj as well. So when it comes into the time of Hajj, the section I'm going to talk about is regarding the times of Hajj and the days of, uh, Dhul Hajj, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here, Inna Allah ma'al ladina tzaqa wal ladina muhzinun. That, oh, servants of Allah, uh, you know, my, myself, to, to have piety and fear of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here that Allah is with those who fear Him and those who are doers of good. Allah mentions regarding, sorry, um, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions, Afdul al ayyam al dunya ayyam al ashar. The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. His virtues are mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he mentioned the best days of the world are the ten days. Allah mentions in the Quran, وَالْفَجَرْ وَلَيَالٍ عَشَرْ Also the Mufassirin have mentioned regarding the, 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 the ten nights or the ten mentioned here is to do with the ten days of Dhul Hijjah, the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. So the best days of the whole world is these next days which is coming up. We are at the end of Dhul, uh, uh, Dhul Qa'dah we're at the end of these a few days left and then we go to Dhul Hijjah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is giving us another, you know, is telling us that the best days of the whole world is these next days, 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So again, another opportunity for us to do good, try and be better, to try and get closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he mentions the first 10 days are the best of them and the person basically who's attained this status uh, because they bring together the best and most honorable of days 
And amongst these days, we have the, uh, the days of Ara the day of Arafah, which is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, where a person strives extra. He does extra good deeds on that day. Generosity with his uh, with his wealth. He he does generosity with his body. Yani he's fasting on that day. Um, uh, uh, Rasulullah uh, mentions here, the, the greatest of days in the sight of Allah is the day of sacrifice. Yani, yani to do with the, the day of Arafah, uh, when a person, sorry, uh, when regarding uh, the day when a person is slaughtering. So this is now also how uh, all of these days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here is so blessed. We know what Ramadan is. We felt Ramadan. We experienced Ramadan. And we know how close we get towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan as well. Allah says, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioning regarding the importance of these next 10 days of the hijjah So how much of importance do we give something? It's through our actions. So last time I mentioned regarding shukr, the gratitude. Sometimes it's very easy to say Alhamdulillah. Shukr. Say shukran. Shukriya. We say these words shukr. On our tongues we say it a lot. But then when it comes to our actions, we don't really show the shukr as we're supposed to show it according to our actions. So, act so when a person does do it through his actions, then a person really appreciates it because he's doing it through his actions. So, i'malu ala dawud shukra. I'malu shukra. Show it with your actions. In the same way, we can say that these are the best days. And we can talk about these are the best days. And we can talk about this and this and that and so forth, virtue after virtue. Why? The only uh, way to try and show shukr towards Allah and really be showing obedience towards Allah is not through your tongue only, it's through your actions. So now experiencing, let's see what a person does. Every single one of us is a slave of Allah. So let's see what a person does in these next 10 days. How much sins that he can stop during these uh, 10 days. How much, not just the 10 days, but further on, he makes intention to stop for the rest of his life. How much a person can fast during these 10 days optional how much a person can be generous in these 10 days how much a person can do extra why because these are mentioned of important days this is something which is really important because rasulullah sallallahu has mentioned is important because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indicating towards his importance uh, 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 rasulullah mentions here ma min amilin azka inda allah azza wa jal ولا أعظم أجرا من خير يفع يفع يعمله في عشر في في عشر الأضحى. There is no deed that is more virtuous in the sight of Allah. Listen, there is no deed, absolutely no deed which is more virtuous in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, including prayers, fasting, your Hajj, your charity, in remembrance of Allah. Uh, sorry, um, there is no deed that is more virtuous in the sight of Allah, nor greater in reward than a good deed done during the ten days of sacrifice. So during these 10 days, so much more. You can do your charities in Dhul Qa'da, in, in Muharram, in, in the other months of the year. But when you come into Dhul Hijjah, multiplied, high level. There's nothing on the same level as this. So this is why Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Rasulullah is indicating again and again, advising us again and again. These are important days coming up. Use these days, opportunity, again opportunity. So we're looking for opportunities. We're looking for time and places to try and uh, uh, do good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَيَذْكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ And they mention, remember the name of Allah on the known days. Some have mentioned these known days are also the days of Dhul uh, Hijjah as well. أَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيلِ So during these 10 days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned what to do. Extra, in, in, in abundance, tahleel. This is now, uh, uh, you know, um, La ilaha illallah, takbir, uh, Allahu Akbar, tahmeed, saying Alhamdulillah, these are extra. These are extra what a person should do. So while he's walking, while he's in the car, just saying tahleel, takbir, tahmeed, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. These are some things that a person should always try to do. So these are the ayyamu, you know, ayyamul ashar. These are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. It's something which is now so you know, uh, emphasized by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you compare it to Ramadan, we say the nights of Ramadan are so blessed, but the days of Dhul Hijjah are on another level. So how much are we going to give importance to it? How much are we going to do in these next 10 days? This will be in the next, uh, maybe three days left. Monday or Tuesday. Uh, Monday or uh, in the next few days. So after the weekend, most likely will be the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. 
So opportunity again Allah has given you. Another opportunity. Another time to try and increase our rewards. Another time to try and feel in a way which is now, you know, Iman increases. Another chance for us, Allah, we give, you know, Allah is giving us a, a, a place of qurb, a place of uh, closeness towards Him. Again, Allah gives us another time, another opportunity. And these are the times where we realize that, Alhamdulillah, Allah is giving us these things. Alhamdulillah, we have this uh, you know, a benefit that Allah is giving us time. And even mentioned here, and I mentioned this story which mentions uh, I'll use it as motivation where uh, the hadith mentions regarding that person that passed away uh, and he passed away uh, he, but he had a good death but he passed away uh, most likely it's a sahabi and he passed away and then uh, somebody was asking regarding what's his situation and then one person passed away one year later one year later he passed away so this person was a shaheed the first person and the other person he, he, he passed away one year later but he wasn't a shaheed so what's the difference between the two? Rasulullah sallallahu explains, and he says motivation, and giving us motivation. That didn't this person read you know, uh, extra salah for another 365 days? Didn't he fast another 30 days of Ramadan? Didn't he uh, do extra charity? Didn't he do extra dhikr? Didn't he do this and didn't he do that? So much extra he done during this extra year. So again, Allah is giving us time, more days, more opportunities again and again. How much opportunities Allah is going to give us? Because we don't know when the next opportunity will arise. We don't know when the next time that we will be alive for the next opportunity of these great days coming, for Hajj coming, for Eid coming, for all of uh, you know the next Ramadan coming, for this next park. All of these things we don't know when we're going to be there. We don't know. Youngsters feel like they're going to be here forever, for for 50, 60, 70 years, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has a different through His ultimate wisdom. <coughs> decide something different. So this is now from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's side and then we believe in this and we have yaqeen in this and we have iman in this. So the iman must increase in these days. Uh, extra worship must increase in these days. And this opportunity to realize that these are my, could be my last days. And now a person tries to really motivate himself, discipline himself, be self-aware of what he is doing to try and better himself as a better Muslim, as a better Mu'min, so he can be benefit to these people in this world and benefit to the people in the Akhir as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to act on what's been said. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanallah bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubi alayhi.